Nowhere else are people expected to make less money simply because they enjoy what they do. If a doctor enjoys being a doctor and helping people, they all of a sudden aren't paid less. So why are dancers any different? Trigger warning, I do mention sexual abuse and eating disorders in this video, so uh, do with that what you will. Protect your peace if you have to. What is up, artists and movers? Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Galen Larice. I know it's been a couple weeks since I put out a new podcast style episode, or frankly, a video of any kind. Um, and that is because I want these podcast style episodes to really explore conversations that aren't necessarily happening in the dance world. Um, and through the lens of more of an adult perspective, I feel like dance is often talked about as like this almost like youthful, wide eyed perspective in terms of like, oh, there's so much dance out there and there's so many opportunities and there's so like, it's just so fun and so cool and so freeing. And I feel like when you reach adulthood as a dancer, there are certain things that you start to realize and you also realize that like no one else is talking about it. <laughs> so in order for me to have these kind of conversations, I have to essentially research and look to other people outside of the dance industry for me to make sense of some of the things that I am seeing in it. And so that's what I've been doing these past two weeks is reading, researching, watching interviews, watching videos, and just building vocabulary to bring these conversations to you guys so that being said uh i plan to keep making these i'm thinking about calling them deeper than dance how do you guys feel about that let me know in the comments down below i feel like i'm gonna call them deeper than dance podcast deeper than dance show i don't know tell me your thoughts <laughs> um but today uh this is not clickbait i am completely going to explain to you why dancers are not special you're not special um and i don't necessarily mean that in a way to talk down to you or make you feel less than it's actually to empower you so as usual you know let this play when you're making your breakfast driving in your car tidying up around your house you guys told me in a poll that that's typically how you listen to these so shout out to you guys for adulting and cleaning your homes because i can honestly say that is not one of my greatest skill sets unfortunately <laughs> i hate cleaning anyway so shout out to you guys for listening while you're doing your adult things um but let's jump into this So I've been thinking a lot lately about power structures that exist in dance. Um, and hear me out on this. Power structures meaning the people who control the things that dancers want. So what is it that dancers want? Dancers want opportunities for gigs. Dancers want opportunities to be showcased in choreography, whether if that's as a principal role in you know, a company or if that's just having the lead part in a competition piece. Um, those are the things that dancers want. And so there's got to be someone who is always doling those opportunities out to dancers. And essentially those people are the ones who get to decide which dancers get them and which dancers don't. And so just through thinking about it, I've been realizing that these hierarchical systems exist in dance where it's like at the top i'm the person who has all of the knowledge this could be a choreographer this could be uh even, sometimes even like a casting director but i have all of the knowledge i have all of the things that you want and if you want them you have to please me you have to get them out of me and you know on a smaller scale it looks like dance teachers and dance students in these situations where these systems are structured as such, uh, it gives those people a lot of power. Um, 
And so that's how you can sometimes see the dance students who are all fighting over the dance teacher's attention, not necessarily because they love that dance teacher all the time. Uh, we've seen that on Dance Moms. But <laughs> because those people hold the keys to opportunity. And oftentimes, those people who hold those keys use different types of let's say like mental priming i don't want to use that word because that sounds yucky but that's the best word i can come up with right now mental priming to get the dancers below them to understand what is expected of them in order for them to move up and so dancers are often told to overexert themselves they're often told to ignore you know, mental illness, all of these things in order to get what they want. And those who do that, they are told are super talented. Those are the people who are the most talented, who are able to surpass those, you know, small inconveniences for the greater picture of being able to dance better. And that's what makes them a better dancer. Essentially, that's what makes them special. Uh, is their ability to please others, whether it be an audience, someone above them, or even someone beside them, you know, a fellow dancer, at their own expense oftentimes. And so it's not only the people who hold this power who believe these things or, you know, look like they believe these things but it is also dancers who adapt to this type of mentality that because i am special i am able to put up with more for the sake of dance because i love it because i am so talented as a dancer i am going to do x y and z because that's what makes me special i'm special enough to be able to do that and still to produce good work and so what does that look like that looks like dancers dancing through injuries. That looks like dancers restrictive eating in order to maintain body size with the belief that because I am special, that because I was born with this talent, I am one of the few who is able to put up with these more difficult circumstances for the love of the art in order to create good art. And that is not so because at your core you are still a human being and human beings perform better when they are well fed human beings perform better when they are in healthy environments and uh william dershowitz i'm almost certain i'm pronouncing that incorrect but i'm reading his book right now the death of the artist and in it he makes this point if art is work then artists are workers no one likes to hear this. Non-artists don't because it shatters their romantic ideas about the creative life. Artists don't either, as people who have tried to organize them as workers have told me. They also buy into the myths. They also want to think they are special. To be a worker is to be like everybody else. Yet to accept that art is work in the more specific sense that it deserves remuneration can be a crucial act of self-empowerment as well as self-definition. And so I see this idea of dancers often relying on the fact that because they love what they do, it somehow makes them more adaptable to experiences that otherwise are detrimental for anyone else. And in fact, by dancers accepting the fact that they are not special, that their art is still work, that they are still human beings deserving of healthy workspaces and quality living wages, in asserting that belief in their daily actions and their daily expectations of those who are above them, they actually end up empowering themselves. They actually end up becoming their own advocates. The author James Sussman, who wrote Work, he talks about how he actually took time to study cultures that weren't Western cultures and to really see how they were living, especially hunter-gatherer cultures. And he noticed that this indoctrined idea and belief of fundamental scarcity, this idea that humans' behavior is due to this 
overwhelming sense of lack and there is this survival of the fittest mentality that those who get the most are the ones that win because there's not enough for everyone that people who actually live in civilizations and cultures where they are still hunter-gatherers do not actually abide by these mental processes and so that this idea of scarcity is actually a western one that kind of simmered its way into capitalism and so why am i telling you this because this idea of scarcity is for sure what controls so much of how the dance industry functions and so much of how dancers function this belief that if i don't do this part for peanuts on the dollar that someone else will come in and take that job and that there will be no other jobs for me and the industry at large thrives off of people thinking this way because that is what allows them to hire people for minimal wages and for people to believe that you know i could be replaced tomorrow and that's something that all of us dancers have heard is you are totally replaceable and thinking back to it you know just me as a young person growing up doing dance i feel like that is a very very dangerous thing to tell a young person and to have them grow up with that mentality and that is how so many dancers are trained to believe and think and so if we accept this fact that dancers are not special right in terms of that dances still work that dancers are human beings and require what any other human being does to live and to exist in this capitalist economy especially here in america then what else is true if we know that dancers aren't special then that means that just as in the greater economy at large money is king and finances are one of the biggest ways to create change so is the same in the dance industry and the main issue that i think that i'm seeing now that i'm getting older and you know i've seen debbie reynolds the dance studio be torn down due to loss of funding i've seen movement lifestyle the that dance studio completely closed down edge completely closed down during the pandemic i've seen all of these places where dancers were meant to grow and flourish ultimately close their doors because of lack of finances and if you think about all of these other art uh, realms and structures you think of film you think of visual arts a lot of them have people who make crazy money who are able to then give that money to people who are lower they are able to reinvest some of their wealth into their and to people who are studying the same thing that they are in hopes that they can help create more opportunities for people because they understand that art is expensive to make and i think the issue is that with dancers getting to that level of having that much wealth is so uncommon that those who have it tend to hoard it to themselves and if they don't then they typically aren't giving it to those who are at the bottom who are uh, more marginalized those who have less privileges they're giving it to people probably in the middle not people at the bottom and so the people at the bottom are the ones who ultimately end up suffering whether if that's through low wages or if that's through not having dance studios at all and no, this is not a blanket statement to mean everyone. For example, Jaqual Knight has his Jaqual Knight Foundation, and he's used that to, I've seen him provide, you know, meals for dancers in LA, and I'm sure there are other things that they're doing that I'm not deeply aware of, but what I'm saying is like, that should be way more common. Like he can't solve every problem. He's not able to, there may be problems that he's not even aware of, and so, you know, having one person doing the work doesn't necessarily mean that the issue is solved. And so I think that's why I'm so incredibly passionate about understanding business and acquiring wealth because dance is not special. Dancers are not special. We don't exist in a vacuum. We exist in this experience as a full economy and are subject to the same things that keep big people staying big and keep small people being small and keep the space between them as large as possible and so finances has a huge role in possibly changing things and so i'm not saying that to say that like everyone has to somehow find a million dollars but i'm saying that one of dancers goals should be to acquire wealth 
not so much because they can buy all kinds of things but because if we want to see the dance industry at large improve then it's going to take us reinvesting in it because people tend to reinvest in people who are similar to them and we're seeing obviously that people who are not dancers do not tend to invest in dancers And so going back, if we know that dancers aren't special, if we know that the dance industry isn't special in terms of who financially benefits and how finances play a part into it, then we also know that in the dance industry, just as in anywhere else, poor people are often the easiest to take advantage of. And that not only looks like taking advantage of people in terms of finances, that looks like sexual abuse that looks like workplace discrimination, which honestly is largely unregulated in the entertainment industry as a whole. It looks like things that actually play a huge role in how people get to live their lives. And so I think my biggest thing that I am hoping you guys take away from this is ultimately that dancers do not benefit from ignoring conversations that have to do with money. It is this weird morale or whatever that dancers have where they're like, oh, I don't do it for the money. The money isn't important to me. Oh yeah, I can do this job. Like, I don't really care that I'm not getting paid that much. Bullshit. (laughs) Bullshit. Nowhere else are people expected to make less money simply because they enjoy what they do. If a doctor enjoys being a doctor and helping people, they all of a sudden aren't paid less. So why are dancers any different? If they do it once, they will do it again and they will continue doing it until they choose not to because those who are paying you are the ones who have the power. They are the ones who hold the opportunity to change your situation and if they don't have to, they won't. And so avoiding conversations that have to do with money, that have to do with finances, that have to do with hopefully one day building wealth and being able to reinvest that back into the dance world at large ignoring those conversations don't help anyone and so what i've found is most important for me as a person who loves dance not necessarily practicing as a performing artist but someone who loves dance and loves to see dance pushed and challenges and i love seeing dancers win like don't get me wrong i love seeing dancers win i love seeing dancers on stage i love seeing them do what they love but From my perspective, I also know the behind the scenes stuff. I'm friends with those people. I've been in circle with those people. I've been in conversation with those people. So I know what goes on behind that curtain. And so for me, I feel that my role is to one, get really, really clear on what my values are as a person who loves the art, who also happens to be black, who also happens to be female, who also happens to be from uh, a smaller community and to get really clear on what those values are and then exercising those values through my dollars and how i choose to use my dollars and so i think that's like the easiest thing that a dancer can do is like put money into things that you actually want to see more of put money into things that actually replicate the values that you have and if you aren't really certain on what those values are then take some time to figure them out for yourself because if you don't figure them out for yourself other people are going to decide them for you And unfortunately, when that happens, when people decide to change those values, then all of a sudden you have to too. And now you're operating in a way that you've never had to before, whether if that's for better or for worse. And, you know, all of these conversations, like I said, they're adult conversations that I want to have because people aren't having them and nobody is benefiting from not having them. So that's really all I wanted to say to you guys. I wanted to share these thoughts. Dancers are not special. You are not special. A, you are a human being, meaning that you operate the best when you have optimal environments and income and social relationships. No one actually produces better work out of having shitty relationships. They just don't. (laughs) 
Second, the dance industry is not special. The dance industry is still subject to the power of finances and how finances can and do and will continue to shape who gets opportunities, what those opportunities look like, and how often those opportunities come around. And oftentimes that ends up making people who are already poor be take advantage of more often. And if that's something that we truly don't like seeing, if we truly say that we hate seeing another newspaper article come out about a dance teacher sexually abusing a child if we truly hate hearing how other dance institutions are using racial bias to keep black and brown teachers out of conventions if we really hate this stuff then we have to actually act in accordance with that and realize that our dollars are what is possibly able to change that um and ultimately having hope that you know, you can change these things because being a cynic about it and just being like, oh, that's just the way things are, will leave things the way things are. And if people had thought that, you know, black people wouldn't be able to vote. Women wouldn't be able to vote. Uh, you know, list off all the examples that you can. Those are the two I have right now that are sticking out most to me. But yeah, let me know down below in the comments, have you adapted this belief that you're special? And uh, again, I'm not trying to make you feel like crap, but more so special in air quotes in terms of, you know, because I love dance so much, I would do this for nothing. And so this is just the life that I live because I love it so much. Or because I love dance so much, I am special enough to be able to survive in the world on less. Let me know if you've adapted these thoughts. I think as dancers, we all have at some point. I certainly have at one point. Um, but I realized that that wasn't doing anything for myself or for anyone else for that matter. Um, so yeah, let me know your thoughts and I will see you guys in my next video next weekend. Later!